Let's check out a bunker now. So Paul here's picked me up at the airport. He's gonna be our tour guide today, so let's go see two bunkers. Okay. Neighborhood is one of the baddest ones. So that's these are old Soviet buildings yes, right these there. Houses look like you like Afghanistan as I say. Yeah. Old because everybody has different Yeah, buildings. they look pretty run down and wore out. You so, have a circle K here, huh? Yeah, yeah. So that's the, American brand. Oh really? Yeah, uh, Circle K. It yeah. was a uh, statoil before. Huh. Was in garages. So he's telling me the bunkers in this area, right here. which is only like five minutes from the airport, yes. right there in the fenced in area? Yes, this one is. Uh, where that brick is? Yes. And wow. We'll park here. Who would think there's a bunker right here, right over there? And we can go. Then. Let's go check it out. Well, I mean, God, we're just in the middle of a little industrial park here. But that little brick building right there. Yeah, that's the emergency exit. This is the emergency exit. So where's the main exit at? Uh, I will show you. It, it was five years ago. Now it's uh, demolished. But there's basically a brick wall. So what we can just huh. break the brick wall because behind the wall, a person bought that space and he is going to live there. Inside. So, and what are these? Apartments or houses? So, uh, businesses? Uh, the story is that, is that uh, this was an all company. The company was here built. Everything was finished building here in 1975. The bunker was also built here in 75 and this was an automation company so people who were dealing in automation uh, uh electricity you know well what is automation it's yeah like opening doors and shops you know but and this is people work here and then the company went bankrupt in 2015 and uh the new owner bought lofts made lofts here and we bought the bunker for ourselves yeah uh, we, this is the uh, emergency exit you so you don't enter here okay we will go through here okay uh, you can see that it's in rough shape because we have a leaky roof here but we're going to renovate it it's all going to be nice so and this was built in what year uh in 1975 all right everything here with the bunker itself and we can go inside i guess i will just open the door wait a second i will turn off the alarm okay Okay, we can Ready? There. Okay. okay. And the lights are right here. Yeah, they're turned on. And we also sometimes uh, turn on the old air raid sirens so that people can listen how the air raid sirens sounded back in the day. You can hear now. Okay. Wow. Wow. So now you heard a Soviet air raid siren. So this is actually from the archives, an original recording. And back in the day, uh, you would hear a Lufanian version, also a Russian one. So yeah, it, it just says that a bombardment is going to start. We need to seek for shelter. And I guess we can go to the bunker itself. They didn't put a lot in their steps, did they? <laughs> Just watch your camera. Okay. Oh, wow. The ceiling's low here. Yes. How far underground is this bunker? The bunker is two meters underground. Two meters. Yes. Okay. This is a Six feet. Tunnel. The tunnel is 10 meters long. And this is our exit. Okay. So a little bit of information. So uh, we we are it's all okay. We are uh, now, like I said, two meters underground, and we are very lucky to have a full man-sized tunnel because back in the Soviet days, when the Soviets built these uh, escape tunnels, they were not being built very high. The average height in all of these escape tunnels is maybe something like this. Maybe oh, you had to crawl. Yeah, you have to like crouch down yeah. and go to a small ladder and escape through a hatch window. But because we would use probably the escape entrance only once, so they decided to uh, cope some of the cement for other things and they build smaller ones. But it depends on the project. For example, here they decided just to build a normal man-sized tunnel. 
And here we have uh, uh, a few things. So first of all, we have this pipe. The, uh, this is our air pipe. We need to have air inside. So all of the air is being sucked in with, with the motors that are inside, and the air is traveling through the outside, through the tunnel, goes inside here, and then travels through special chambers to the ventilation system itself. Right here we have a very interesting device. This device, we can see there's shutters inside. They close like this. If somehow the bomb blast gets inside, yeah. they just close them and it doesn't go inside further. Yeah. But if somehow, it, uh, but if it's too strong, the bomb blast will go to a special chamber and we will stop it in there. I will show you inside how it works. This is just a fuse box, nothing special. And the most interesting thing is the bomb blast door. So this bomb blast door, it weighs about 300 kilograms. Uh, so it can withstand uh, uh, the nuclear explosion, obviously, depends on the epicenter, can withstand any chemical diseases, radiation going through. So this door inside is like almost half empty. Inside we have different uh, metal rods that go from one side to the other side to make the wall door go more stronger. And all of the empty spaces inside are filled just with air, but a familiar a uh, door that's a bit bigger, inside the door might be having sand. Uh, I saw one of those doors. Why sand? Well, after an atomic explosion, the first, uh, uh, the first time we will have a lot of heat. So the bunker doesn't need to have that heat inside. The sand works out as a heat stopper, but we don't have no sand here. Uh, air inside also might be used as a heat stopper. Uh, but the door will uh, hold the heat a maximum of one hour. And after that, some big hinges. That's a big hinges. You can uh, do yeah. longer and open the yeah, door. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead and open. Okay. I'll fill it for you. So we'll open the door. The door is also in good condition. The so uh, I also tested the door if it's uh, sealed properly. So how did we test that? How did the people do that back in the day? So you have to close the door, you have to turn on the ventilation system on, you need to have a, a lit candle and you need to uh, do it like this all around the door. If the, if the fire doesn't move, then there's, it's all sealed, it's all okay. This gas tight seal right there, yeah. yeah. That's cool. I love and these. We have obviously, like every bunker needs to have a special room, like in the submarine. Uh, in Lufthansa, we call it the tamburas. I don't know how to guys call it in English. But uh, here, if, for example, if a person will be in a radiated area, before going into the clean room, he would step here, take his dirty clothes off, and uh, make the sanitation of his body and close everything here. So he might go inside and move the clean body inside. Every fil filthiness will be stayed here. Uh, so, so this is just your mud room, we call it, yeah, when you don't have a shower. Yeah, yeah. Showers are only built in big bunkers. Back, yeah. Back. Well, if you if you see my videos on YouTube, my bunkers are the same way. I have two doors and yeah, there's a mudroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I make them the same way today that they That's, did back then. The, is this the escape tunnel? No, this is not. Uh, this small glass door inside there's two chambers. And actually, this is a very uh, smart idea. So let's remember we have the air pipe. Yeah. Yeah. That air pipe first goes into this first chamber. If somehow the bomb blast uh, gets inside with the air, the bomb blast does not travel to the main room and cause trouble. But how do we stop the bomb blast? It smashes into the first wall of the chamber and that's how we stop it. And the rest of the air is being sucked in through a second chamber here and travels through a separate pipe to the filtering area. Do you have a light on your uh, camera? I, I will just turn the flashlight on. Yeah. There's no light inside you. Okay, that so there's a second door yeah, in there. That's the pipe that... Yeah, put the there. light in there. Yeah, and that's the second chamber, and the other pipe is uh, next to the ceiling. Okay, cool. Uh, you can fill out the door because it's still all original. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. The doors are working here. And these are all made in Russia or Lithuania? Uh, no, not in Lithuania. These doors are all the same, but they have different makers. There's a, a catalog, a journal, and some of them are made in Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the last door we have, well, all obviously we have, have to have a second door. It's not that thick as the first one, obviously, but it's also working well. <laughs> Have 
pipes underneath and walk into the bunker itself. And this bunker was for how many people? A maximum of 100 people. Uh, but if we bring 100 people here, then we will be all like sardines in a can. But, yeah. But we cannot bring any more, but, a big but. Uh, so this company had about 50 workers. So 50 workers used to work here. And like the old CEO said, that every person uh, that was working here, about 40, 50 people needed to come here and be in safety. So nobody would not be left behind. So and this, all the original blowers. Yes, these are our ventilation system. This is the air re recycling system. Right here, we uh, suck all the air and it's being filtrated through the famous old Soviet FP type filters right here. I can turn them on. Uh, if there's no power, we have to crank the cranks and do it uh, mechanically. But we have a slight problem. This uh, handle does not work because one part is broken. But we have a working electric motor who will turn it on. And they still work after all they these still years. Work, yes. And here, this is the air recycling system because in bunkers we don't have any windows to uh, get some fresh air. So to not to use uh, that often the filters, we can sometimes just use and recycle the air that we have here. We have a motor, if there's no electricity, we can spin the crank like this. And you can also try... And you, if you put your hand here, you can feel the airflow right here. Yeah. The these, valves opening these up. These valves are all work. Everything is in working order. Well, it should. It's only 1975. Yeah, I and, and I will turn on everything into the wall socket. Well, back in the day, all, all Soviet factory had, had a voltage of 360 volts. If I'm correct, sorry or not. Uh, so we had to all change it to 220 volts. Back in the day, we just used the buttons, but now the voltage has changed. So we have to turn it on through just simple wires like this. And I will turn it on. Now the recycling system is on. Now the air is just being recycled. This motor is on. You can put your hand here if you want to. Wow. This is written in uh, Russian. It's in Russian, yes. But uh, there's some Lithuanian words also. And now we have to turn on the second one. So the second motor. Now turn on the second motor. Now we are getting the air from the outside. It's being filtered. And we get the fresh air through that ventilation shaft above. But we have the same one pump. This is the ARV49 type pump. And we have the same one right here. It's all the same, but just has a working handle. So you can spin it later. The air is sucked in through here and blows away through here. And to show how it looks inside, I also demonstrate people how does the turbine itself looks inside. I take the screw off. This is how it looks inside. This part is called the snail, because it looks like a snail. And this is the fan itself. This is how there is being blown. Well, this is the motor. Inside we have gears. 
And, and how many of these bunkers did they build? Uh, back in the Soviet days, the Soviet builds about a thousand uh, familiar bunkers back here in Lithuania. In Vilnius, let alone a little bit less than 300 bunkers. Uh, they're obviously uh, small or big ones. Our bunker can, can take maximum of 100 people. So you would try to put 100 people in here? Uh, well, we will be all like standing. Yeah, there. you would so all be standing. So realistically, this is really for about yeah, but 20 people. <laughs> the company had about 40, 50 people. So yeah. more or less, you know. What do you so have here? The here? Obviously, there's bunkers can fit inside a thousand people, 500 people. Uh, you can also see we have lockers. Here in the lockers, we have all of our equipment. So the first locker, we have some medicine and some food inside. And this is original stuff? This is all original stuff, yes. We have uh, some medical dishes, medical soap. Uh, this is soap. This soap is about 40 years old. It's still not in use. Soviets used this kind of soap back in the day. 70%. Wow. Uh, toilet paper. If somebody didn't know from America, toilet paper was a rare thing back in the day because it was not enough for everybody. It was rare. And people rarely had toilet paper. They mostly used different books, some kind of newspapers, rags, you know. But in rare occasions, some bunkers might need toilet paper. So has anybody seen toilet paper like this? This is uh, locally made Soviet toilet paper, and you can uh, feel the quality of the toilet paper. Oh my God, it's like hard paper. Yeah, they have something familiar in Venezuela. Huh. Wow. It doesn't really absorb. I don't want that on my butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have just standard rolls right here. Uh, going down, we have a little bit of medication. So uh, what you need to know is that every bunker back in the Soviet days had its own team because the bunker needs to have its team to maintain the bunker because the simple people might not know what to turn on, what to turn turn down, how to use generators or light systems. So we need a doctor that can help people out. And uh, this bunker had a, a team of four or five men. I don't know where they're now, maybe dead or somewhere to travel somewhere. And yeah, and one of the doctors would be responsible of the medications. Uh, medications here, we have the famous uh, AE2, A kits right here. Uh, well, obviously there's no pills inside it. Just and who were the Soviets afraid would bomb them? The Americans? Uh, yes, that was the number one target. But uh, we Lufthansa really like Americans, so it was more of a Russian thing. Yeah, so they the Russians just brainwashed us into sort of wow. feeling. And what is it? What is this map on the wall? Uh, this map shows the type of the bunkers that we might meet. So in, in general, we have three types of bunkers that are commonly seen. So the most common one is this one, a bunker under under the building. So we dig a hole, build a bunker, and on top we can build any kind of building because it's a good foundation. Our bunker is also under a building. And the uh, other one, which is uh, mo more uh, rarer to see, is an alone standing bunker. Is this one? It's you can, uh, and it will be in any courtyard or outside. You will see a two meter small like hill, and be under the hill, they will have a bunker. Uh, we don't really have too much of these. By the way, I remember we can go and see one bunker like this one. Uh, so we have an alone standing bunker in Vilnius. The new, the new owner bought that bunker. He took all of the soil from it. It's all now naked, as I say, and they're going to build apartments on top and use a bunker as a garage. Yeah. So and you he, said he bought this bunker for 20,000 euros? 20,000 euros in 2019. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. And also last type of the bunker is the army headquarters. Oh, so, yeah. And we also have these closed boxes. These boxes have the uh, IPP. So here we have the uh, bottle that has a special uh, chemical liquid. We put it on the rag here. And we need to sanitize our open body parts. And we got some. Uh, we have two radiation mirrors right here. The DP5 models, the older versions one. Later the Soviets developed more modern ones like these ones. Uh, this one works, but it's not calibrated, so we'll be giving us some errors. But it's nothing to worry about. We didn't have no war. All of these bunkers are clean. We had a uh, Vilnius uh, radiation committee coming here. They measured uh, with their devices, everything, so our bunker is clean, no radiation, as it should be. Also, what we have in our bunker, we have these cans with a Kalashnikov drawn at it. So it's not a gun. I open it, we have a brush and a button. Inside we have special chemical liquid. The whole thing is called the EDPS-69. 
If a Soviet soldier would be in the chemical area, he would get some chemicals on his gun. So to properly sanitize his weapon, he would press it, the juices come out, and he would sanitize his weapon like this. You might be asking, what does a gun cleaning kit uh, does in a civilian bunker? These things were brought, if, uh, th these cans were de delivered in different bunkers, and these were meant to, to be used as uh, san sanitizers for different tools. We would be sanitizing our shovels, different axes, tools, because those tools might be used uh, outside to clean the rubble, and that rubble might be contaminated, so we need to keep our instruments clean. So that's the reason why they are here. And we have some rebreather gas, yes, telephones, all of the equipment is right here. And there's also a second cabinet here. So this is the thing that people don't know in America. Mm -hmm. How long you need to actually be in a bomb shelter after a nuclear attack. But, and the Soviets had it set for two, three days. Okay. Two to three days. Because yeah. the radiation decays so fast. Yeah. But Hollywood has made it sound like the radiation will last for 20,000 years yeah, and yeah, it's I the know. end of the world. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so yeah. this is living proof. They could literally have people come down here. They'll just sit on the ground yes. in two, three days. They won't even probably sleep that's unless true. they sleep leaning against each yes, other. And then they'll go outside yeah. because they can return to the surface. If uh, COVID would be back in the Soviet days, people might be wearing these kinds of gas masks. So it's what is this? This is a do-it-yourself gas mask. Uh, I'm sorry, mask. And it, well, it's better to wear any mask than no gas mask. So it's made from different clothes, uh, bed sheets, uh, just for a simple mask. When we had COVID, we also had a do-it-yourself like schematics on how to make one. Wow. But this is a Soviet one. It has glass eyes here. Hmm. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah. And it was here. Uh, so yeah, so about the water, the water is, uh, comes from the water plant, uh, we will be always having clean water here, and the water travels through the second pipe to our toilets right here. Uh, these lockers uh, had uh, gas masks inside, but they were all rotten away, so we just keep our tools inside, but the toilets are right here. So here, this is the woman's bathroom, this is the man's bathroom. They're all like the same. All of the hygiene products here are original from the Soviet days, but these might be brought by uh, civilians. Yeah, this is the original toilet. toilet. Yes. Uh, even uh, the toilet seats were rare back in the days. Yeah, that's metal. Uh, uh, that, that's uh, cork, actually. It's cork? Yeah, that's, that's the seat that came from cork. Oh, okay. It's just that color. Yeah. Oh, wow. It looks like rusted metal. It's cork. It is, yeah. Okay. The, the systems all work, the water is running. Uh, that's uh, all the... And what's so, under the floor here? Under the floor we have a small uh, like a hole, so we keep all of our plumbing systems, the valves, because the toilets are connected to the main sewer system. We have valves there and some plumbing, and that's it, nothing special really. And here we have the women's bathroom, everything also is the same. Uh, you can feel on the sink, we have that black thing. It's actually the oldest thing in the bunker. It's soap that was here before me. Yes? Yes, that soap, it was here before me. Um, I, I, I came here in 2017. That and bar soap's been here for 40, no, uh, God, for 50 years. And I left it to see how it will look like in the future. So the oldest thing <laughs> Okay. That's the hand dryer. And these are simple toilets. And then they got some radios down here. Yeah, uh, well, I also mentioned that every bunker had a team back in the day, so the teammates might be having their, obviously they had it all, all uniforms. So the uniforms are, are different. So one of the examples of the uniforms are right here. So we have the Arbans, uh, GO, uh, civil defense in Russian, uh, metal that he participated in civil defense. We have also posters that tell all the basic informations, and we have... Is all this in Russian? It's all in Russian, yes. Well, it depends on the city. If it's more... Uh, all, all also on the factory. If it's more uh, Lithuanian factory or a more Lithuanian city, then everything will be in more Lithuanian. Do many Lithuanians speak Russian now? Uh, not much. I forgot the statistics, statistics but... Uh, not sure, but we have about maybe two percent of Russian living in Lithuania. Really? Not really much, yeah. 
so yeah and these are our communication systems but it's uh, it's all scattered around here uh we didn't have this electronics they were brought here by me uh, the uh, factory that was demolishing right here they gave gave us away these equipments uh, we just had one simple phone yeah. uh, more advanced bunkers might be having these kind of uh uh, devices right here this metal cabinet it's the automated telephone station and this is basically the brains of the telephone and well, it looks like this all the circuit boards inside and i will turn on the what's it gonna do uh, nothing it's just oh. <laughs> for, for like an exposition okay so, yeah and here we have a uh, bomb blast door so this bomb blast door is from the 60s and 70s and it's from one school they uh, made the bunker into a storage space and this door weights about like 70 kilograms and they give it away and it's from an escape entrance so yeah. you can imagine how much we need to crouch down and yeah i just painted and saved it these are the latches and yes still here we have it <laughs> and we obviously have the famous baby gas mask that's a baby oh they yeah. put a baby inside there yeah well babies have small uh, faces they have some problems so uh they decided to make a baby gas mask well we also had horse gas masks back in the world war one and they decided to make the kzd4 model gas mask so maximum of two babies we put them inside the parents see how they feel inside for the, the windows here these are the filters and the baby stays there up to 30 minutes maximum and how, you need to carry it like this to a safer spot how long do the gas masks last before they had to change the filter well it depends on the on the outside world if it's uh, more cleaner or more dustier but as we, we say if you feel the filter is heavy then you need to change it so yeah and we can also show you here we have also some posters here and we have a tv set here Uh, we have two TVs here. These are all of the Lufthansa TVs. And we show the people uh, a few movies, you know, on civil defense, how they used to participate back in the day. These are bunk beds, so the people will be sleeping here. Well, by shift, somebody sleeps, then changes. Uh, you can lay down, and I slept here one day. So you have 10 foot ceilings in here, and you've got quadruple and, bunk beds. Yeah, and we have one bed. Yeah, these are some books for like reading if somebody wants. Yeah, and we sometimes show the people uh, uh, documentary on civil defense how it was back in the, back in the days.